concept of optical fiber. Okay, it's all about guiding light. That's all optical fiber does. Okay, and it doesn't necessarily need to be optical fiber in order for it to work. You can do this with a bucket with a couple of a uh, couple of clear hole and a hole on the other side. If you shine light through the water, okay, it will get bent in the uh, in the flow of water. So it will bounce off the outside of the water and bounce down. So water itself can act as an optical guide. Okay, you get plastic optical fibres out there you know, that uh, work on the back of your stereo to carry your uh, your sound around when it's converted to digital. Okay, it's all all fibre is optical fibre. It doesn't need to be glass. It can be plastic. There's a whole bunch of options out there. It is a guide for a beam of light. So yeah, that's all it's doing. It's guiding this ray of light in a direction that you want it to. So okay, we talk about the refractive index. So the refractive index is all about this bounce off the walls. Okay? So the refractive index, all it is is the speed of light, okay? Referenced in the medium we're talking about, reference to the speed of light in vacuum. That's all the refractive index is. It's just a, you know, it's a comparison of how fast it goes in our particular medium compared to vacuum. So, you know, the number n, yeah, you know, three by ten to the eight meters a second. So, you, know, you find um, find light measured in meters per second, and that's usually uh, what they measure it in all the other mediums as well. So what that gives you is C over the speed in the actual medium. It gives us a number N. So you hear refractive index, N. That's what, it's, that's what its number is. So very, very simple calculation. Okay. So where does that fit in when we're doing our calcs? Okay. We're talking about the refractive index of this medium and the refractive index of the other medium. So this could be glass, okay, and this could be air, or it could be a different sort of glass, yeah, glass two, or it could be you know, water and air, or it could be plastic and you know, air. So yeah, anything that has a difference in refractive index, these two numbers different, okay, can act as a guide for a light wave. Okay? So Snell's law, this one here, says that N one, so the index in, in this uh, this medium, okay, multiplied by the sine of the angle in here, okay, equals the refractive index in medium two, okay, multiplied by the sine of this angle here, okay. So, at a critical angle, okay, n one sine equals theta two. So the critical angle is the one at which, when this light ray comes incident, it goes along the edge, okay. That's what the critical angle is, okay. It's that angle at which, yeah, a light ray doesn't escape anymore. That's the critical angle. It's the changeover point between a ray leaving the uh, the internal medium here and not leaving. So that's that's all the critical angle is. It's that angle at which that light starts to stay inside medium one. So does that make sense? And it's, it's basically the law that underlies fiber optics working. So everyone's comfortable with with my scribbling. It's all good. Cool. So keep in mind that this has an impact on the angle at which you need to feed light into the end of your fiber optic uh, um, medium. So you know things like the critical angle. If you uh, if you have your light coming in. Yeah, too steeply, it's just going to bounce off. So this critical angle is what determines yeah, how you're going to get this light into the end of the fiber, because it impacts the angles that you can uh, you can actually get light in. So that's what drives it. 
Snell's law when we're talking about uh, the angles. So refraction. So light source inside a dense medium, light medium. Cracky, that colour doesn't work so well. Let's try. Let's try that one. So as we see here, yeah, different angles. It goes through as you get shallower and shallower. It goes through the critical angle here. Okay, it goes along the boundary, and then it starts to return inside the medium. So refraction is that point at which the angle becomes shallow enough that the light ray stays inside and starts to be guided by the uh, by the medium that, uh, that that's got the uh, the source being pushed into. So some refractive indexes. Okay, as you wouldn't be surprised, seeing as it's yeah. You know, C over V, okay. Vacuum is one, okay. Three by ten to the eight over three by ten to the eight is one, okay. So refractive indexes, yeah, you know, they're not very very big numbers, okay. So you know, air one point zero 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 two, okay. Glass one point five, okay. Some various other things, your silicons one point four. So yeah, there's a whole raft of you know, different refractive indexes depending on the material that you're using. So again, when the uh, the guys are designing fibre, yeah, it's this refractive index that's critical to uh, to getting the light to stay in. The inside and the outside of the fibre have got to be different refractive indexes. They don't need to differ by very much, but they have to be different. So how does a bit of fibre actually actually look? Okay, so we're talking about the core. Usually, it's going to be a refractive index of about 1.45. So we're talking about fused silica, this sort of stuff. Okay. So again, cladding 1.43. Yeah, it's only 0.02 different. Okay. So generally made of silica. So the core has to have a greater refractive index than the cladding. Okay, so fractionally the larger number in the middle. So your numerical aperture measures the light gathering capability. So you hear here talk about numerical aperture. It's this number in here, numerical aperture, an angle. Okay, so it's this angle here at which you need to hit the core in order to get this light beam to go through the end and make it in to the core itself and then get you know, transmitted and bounced along inside. So yeah, numerical aperture, so you've got the uh, refractive index of air, refractive index of the core, cladding, so yeah, there's a calc, it's fairly simple, but numerical aperture is angle in there. Okay. So again, terms, buffer, talking about the outside, core, a little bit the light goes down and then the cladding is the piece that goes around the outside of that. So pretty simple um, looking structure, um, took a lot of work initially to get it, uh, get it right for the manufacturing. So advantages to fibre, okay, unaffected by external electromagnetic radiation. Okay, unless you break it or melt it, there's not a lot you can actually do to fiber to cause it to uh, to not work. You don't get crosstalk from fiber. Doesn't conduct electricity. Okay, so great in explosive atmospheres. Also great for running between buildings to uh, mitigate against lightning strikes. Um, the thing, if you're running fiber in the outdoors, hung on poles and trees, is you know, be aware of the strength member. If you use a steel strength member in it, then that will conduct electricity and cause you issues if you get a lightning strike on it. So you know, there's a lot of um, strength members out there that are uh, polyamides, you know, sort of the Kevlars, that are non-conductive and work really, really well. So, okay, they also carry very, very high data rates and they're good for long distances. So. Welcome along to the session. We're just sort of working through the uh, the intro. So you know, pick up the recording. You'll be all good. So, okay. So really, really good for passing information. So evolved when telecoms needed to push more voice down their communications conduits. Okay, originally. 
So they started getting to very, very high density voice uh, and copper wasn't actually able to uh, to get it down and they were starting to run out of uh, you know, high bandwidth microwave links and they needed something that was more reliable. Uh, microwave can be interesting to get fully reliable depending on uh, your weather patterns. So, and they're also after something unaffected by noise and industrial. So, okay. All it is is a low loss waveguide for light. That's all fiber is. Okay? The core has usually got a little bit of germanium doped into the silica, and the cladding is pure silica glass. So that's the only difference. That's, uh, that's what gives you that 0 0.002 difference between the core and the cladding. So a little bit of germanium in the, in the glass and the core. So the fibers themselves. Okay, we touched on this way back in comms. Okay, size-wise, multi-mode fiber. What's well, termed multi-mode? Okay, the outside's the same on both of them. 125 micrometers. Multi-mode, the core is 50 or 62.5, depending on the standard and who built it. Okay, single mode, your core is down at 8.5 micrometers. So that's the difference between the two of them, between single mode and multi-mode. So multi-mode, it's talking about it carries many modes of light, okay? Um, 50 or 62 and a half, good out to about five kilometers, okay? You can push two to 300 megabit per second down it. Usually it's gonna be 850 or 1300 nanometers as a light source, okay? Generally, okay, generally LEDs used for multi-mode, okay? So it's multi-mode fiber. Difference between single mode and multi-mode, okay? Single mode just has the ability for one light ray to get through it. There is only one mode of reflection transmission through that fiber, okay? Multi-mode, you get multiple different paths available, okay? That's all it means. There's multiple ways for a light ray to get in through that numerical aperture, okay, and make its way and make it out the other end. So what this means is if you put the same pulse in a single mode and a multi-mode, you're going to get a very, very nice clean pulse that looks pretty much exactly the same at the end of the single mode. And you're going to, over the further you push it, the pulse out of a multi-mode is going to spread and get you know, flatter and wider and less like a pulse. So you know, those are the differences between single mode and multi-mode. So all that impacts that difference is the size of the core. By being an 8.5 micrometer core in single mode, it means that there is only one transmission path that will work to get a, a beam of light in. So. You get different index profiles, both in single mode and multi-mode, okay? Step index, okay, is as you go across, you've got air on the outside, steps into the cladding, okay, steps into the core, okay? So you've got N of air, N of the cladding, N of the core, okay? So that's what it is. There's a sharp transition at this point here between the cladding and the, cl and the core. Okay, there's two variants of what are termed graded index fiber. Okay, the first one, you go air to the cladding and then you have a transition into the core like that. So what this means is that instead of having all of that glass in the middle exactly the same refractive index, the refractive index slowly varies as it goes into the core and comes out again. What this gives you is instead of having this sharp corner, okay, you get a smooth curve as the light ray goes out to the edge of the uh, edge of the core and back in again. When if you get a sharp reflection like this, you get some loss out into the cladding and you lose some light. Okay? So a graded index fiber will actually, in a multi-mode situation, transmit light further. It will be more expensive, but that may be a trade-off that, uh, that you're happy to take. Okay? The other way that you can see graded done is that there is no cladding, okay? There is no cladding bit here. It just starts changing refractive index all the way from the core into the middle. So that's no step to the cladding. So it's a 
full width graded. Again, it works exactly the same. Okay, it just curves through. Now again, yeah, it's multi-mode. There can be multiple paths through. Okay. Again, yeah. So if you see these terms out there, that's all they mean. Graded index just means that in the middle of the core, okay, the refractive index changes slowly from the outside to the inside and then back out again. And it's all about trying to minimise the loss as the uh, the light ray changes changes direction inside the core. So single mode, okay. Same again. Air cladding core. Refractive index, refractive index, refractive index. Okay, input pulse, output pulse. Again, you've got to get it pretty much perfectly aligned in order to get the light in. Okay. So that's the difference between step and graded. Okay, single mode, multi mode, and the options in that space. Everyone's comfy? Any questions at this point before we dive in further? Okay, cool. So, fiber. Why do we choose the wavelengths that we choose? Okay? It's all about the characteristics of the glass. Okay? And the glass's transparency at various wavelengths. Okay? Early fiber optics, okay, had these dips about here. Okay? So this is where you got 4 dB of loss with that particular wavelength of fiber. So there's your 850 nanometers, and that's about you know, uh, 1100 nanometers. So early fiber optics, the transmitters' receiver sensitivities they use were down here at 850. So this is why the original ones were 850. So this is termed the short wave band down in here. Okay, so if you hear people talking about short wave transmitters for fiber, it's what they mean, 850 nanometer. So the first fiber optics were most transparent to light at about that point there. Okay, so the later fiber, okay, that you see out there, and you'll hear the terms medium and long wave, okay, up here at 1330 and up here at, what was it, 1560 or something about that. Okay, so up in those wavelengths, and again, you see the latest characteristics here, where are the dips to the minimum? You know, we're talking down here at absolutely tiny, you know, losses. Um, at those wavelengths to get through fiber. So this is why your transmit and receives are acting at specific wavelengths of light. It's all about the attenuation okay, of the fiber at those particular frequencies. So that's why you see 850, um, 1330 and 1500-ish. Okay? So that's the reason. It's matching the uh, transmit and receive to the attenuation characteristics of the fiberglass itself.